Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You are listening to the Big Cruise Podcast. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 172, the first proper episode of 2024, and we are very excited to be back with you. Chris is literally sitting in the wings. He's online, ready to talk all things uh, maritime history. Uh, We're going to answer Chris's quiz question, which he kindly teased you with uh, earlier in the year, and I believe he's got another quiz question up his sleeve as well. So uh, listen in and uh, do get in touch. Do keep getting in touch with us. We really appreciate it, and no matter what you do, whether it's listening, liking, subscribing, contacting us via the website, uh, liking us on uh, social media, you know, every little bit helps uh, to keep the good word of uh, Cruise and of course the good word of the Big Cruise podcast out in uh, general domain. So thank you. Uh, But let's get the show on the road. Let's get Chris on the line and let's start talking uh, all things Cruise. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, Chris. Good to be uh, back online with you, mate. Happy season five, Barry. Fifth year of doing this. Can you believe it? Fifth year. We're already in February of 2024. It's uh, it's hurtling past at the speed of light at the minute, but uh, all good. Lots of good news in the, the cruise world, and of course, uh, lots of interest from from the listeners, which has been great. Uh, yeah, mentioning- so many emails and messages, and, and and that sent through the Christmas period, hasn't there? Mm, absolutely and of course you teased our listeners last week uh, or actually a couple of weeks ago now um, mm. with chris's quiz so remind us what the question was again so yes it was a question in relation to the design uh, characteristics of queen mary 2 as an ocean liner make a few things that about the ship that are a little bit different from cruise ships and the three options i gave was um, what is unique to queen mary 2 that most cruise ships don't have the first option was uh, 360 degree rotating azipods the second option was a bulbous bow, and the third options were doors on the bow thruster entries, the the, the um, openings on the side of the ship where the bow thruster um, uh, interacts with the water. Does the ship have doors there? And mm-hmm. we got quite a few responses, didn't we? We did, yeah. We had uh, a couple of uh, incorrect answers. Let's start off with uh, them. We had uh, quite a few people that said the bulbous bow, which is actually obviously, of course, incorrect. That's featured on a lot of ships nowadays. Yeah. And I think I think so many um, so many uh, uh, cruise ships now um, that are being put into service are being built without bulbous bows, and a lot of the cruise lines are using that in their PR as a as a way to sort of talk about um, the hydrodynamic efficiency of the hull. So it makes sense that people might be a bit confused, but the vast yeah. majority of ships have a bulbous bow, and even now, despite what um, some of the PR might say about these ships, there are still many many new ships being built with a bulbous bow. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, the other incorrect answer was, of course, the the three hundred and sixty degree turning azipods. They are featured on lots and lots of ships nowadays. It's the, I think it's probably the preferred way to propel the ships, mm. isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is uh, very popular. But what I find interesting is that every now and then a new ship design will come up that has the old propulsion system uh, of propellers and rudders. And and just recently, I was on board the Royal Princess, which is of the Royal class from Princess Cruises, not that old. <laughs> in terms mm-hmm. of its design, and she is fully rudder and propeller driven. So I thought that was quite interesting. Mm, I didn't realise that. Wow, okay. Mm. Um, but of course, the correct answer was, of course, the, the doors that uh, cover or protect the, the, the bow thrusters. It is. That is correct. However, some interesting information for you that I have since mm. found out. So Queen Mary 2 has doors on her, had doors on her bow thruster um, openings because when the ship is going at high speed regimes across the North uh, Atlantic, they want to reduce any drag that the, that these bow thruster openings might have. Most mm-hmm. cruise ships just have the bow thrusters with a sort of um, mesh or a grate over it, but that introduces drag onto the hydrodynamics of the hull. Um, so Queen Mary 2 had those doors, just like QE2 did before her. Uh, but in the recent refit, just uh, late last year, they've actually um, removed those bow thruster doors um, wow. and are trialling the ship operating without them. Um, actually, the Queen Mary 2's designer, Stephen Payne, he contacted me to let me know that um, oh, really? he, obviously, he obviously got the answer right. <laughs> he, knew, he knew the design <laughs> of the ship, um, but um, mentioned that they have been removed uh, because the ship doesn't operate at those high speeds on the North Atlantic anymore. They, they do um, operate her on, on seven-day crossings rather than the five- or six-day crossings. And so the, the benefit of the me- mechanical 
um, uh, the benefit rather of the of the of streamlining of the ship isn't as apparent at those lower speeds, uh, yeah. and uh, the mechanics of maintaining these these very expensive doors um, just doesn't potentially doesn't add up. So they have been removed, and they're trialing her out without them. So a nice little twist to our to our um, to our story at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, as I say, lots and lots of people contacted both yourself and I. Uh, the three correct actors that we have here came in from Gary S. in Sydney, or an official photographer. Thank you, Gary. Kwa uh, Posorio, I think is the correct pronunciation mm-hmm. there. Um, and Luke in Queensland. So well done to you three. Uh, you can claim the bragging rights in uh, Chris's quiz. <laughs> Thank you for participating. <laughs> now, of course, if you do want to get in touch with the show, you can do so. Send in a listener question. You can do it uh, via the website, thebigcruisepodcast.com. Uh, click on Join the Show. Or don't forget, there is that little microphone if you want to send us an audio note and we can weave your audio in and uh, do yeah. our best to answer those questions no as well. No one's been brave enough to do that yet. No. Well, maybe we'll, uh, well, maybe we'll reintroduce it next week and we, that can be the preferred way for people to answer it, maybe. Well, we're going we're gonna to lay down the challenge. to Who's the first person who's going to be brave enough to leave us an audio message? <laughs> good. Awesome. <laughs> now, mate, we've got um, lots of, uh, well, you've been putting out lots of YouTube, first of all. So uh, well done on all mm. those little stories that have been coming out. We have been uh, popping them on the socials. And, of course, the link to Chris's uh, YouTube channel is always in, in the show notes. Is there anything that you want to quickly mention that uh, has been out recently? Well, I think the one that's doing absolutely um, amazing in terms of the engagement is one I did two weeks ago now, uh, which is the ships that stopped a city. And it's a um, first-hand account, I suppose, from when I was when I was there, when Queen Mary 2 and QE2 rendezvoused in Sydney Harbour. Um, it's had just shy of 50,000 views, but, you know, h- hundreds of, uh, of people have commented and uh, sharing their stories of that amazing day because literally two ships brought the whole city to a to a grinding halt. Um, mm-hmm. I won't spoil the video, but it is one of the most remarkable displays of um, pu- public gatherings that, I, that I've ever seen uh, to see two ocean liners, uh, which may, you know, obviously I get, I thought was wonderful, but I just, no, I don't think anyone quite expected that number of people um, to come out to see the two ships. And it's just lovely to see everybody sort of reminiscing on that day from back in, um, back in 2007. Uh, and and a whole heap of people who who now watch YouTube who weren't even born back then, uh, who are who are saying you know oh my gosh I never I never knew I had no idea that even happened so um, it's been a fun one and then of course um, yesterday the reveal of Queen Anne's naming ceremony location which I thought we could touch on in terms of uh, maritime history. Yeah, of course, because they've named the the naming location, and uh, obviously there's lots of history and tradition around that particular ceremony. So, uh, mm. where are you not choosing to uh, do the naming, Chris? They're going to name her in, or well, officially name her. So I suppose the christening ceremony, because everyone already knows the name. Um, yeah. But they're going to to do that in Liverpool uh, in oh, June nice. during uh, the ship's first uh, round Britain cruise, which um, you know I've I've had my inboxes flooding with messages from people that, that kind of alerted me to this in the first place because of course I was the news gets released in the UK and in Australia here where sometimes we're already ready for bed <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but a lot of people are very you know kind of surprised that Cunard um, is doing the naming ceremony after the ship's maiden voyage mm. yeah which is, I've, I've got a, a feeling on that. I'm, I'm a bit of a traditionalist I think it really should be done before the first voyage I think that's mm, just the right thing to do but obviously you know cruise lines do different things for different reasons and Cunard are obviously Ooh. choosing to do uh, but of course they are acknowledging the the uh the, the original home of course of, of Cunard which is nice yeah so um Liverpool being the, the the port where the Cunard transatlantic express service was established uh the Cunard uh, head office was was based in Liverpool and back when they chose Liverpool in the 18 1840 it was a bit of a, a break from shipping tradition in the UK anyway, because Bristol up to that point had been the main transatlantic sea hub. Of course, Cunard Mm -hmm. was the first uh, company to offer regularly scheduled services with the steamships. Um, Prior to that, there'd been irregular scheduled services uh, out of Bristol uh, with other other shipping brands, but Liverpool was very famous with Cunard and they they maintained it as their head office until the until the QE2 entered service, but um, it was the the home port up until the 1920s for the express service, uh, when the express liners were, were relocated to Southampton, which has 
um, much you know superior connections to London uh, as the um, as the capital and the financial hub. Um, but you know it's an interesting thing, Baz, because if you look at the the history of the Cunard Queens. Um, I think the reason why so many people are surprised by this is that every other Cunard queen prior to uh, Queen Anne has been has been christened and named before the maiden voyage. Um, mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth, uh, rather RMS Queen Mary and RMS Queen Elizabeth and the QE2 were all named at their launching in Scotland, so well before their maiden voyages. Um, queen Mary II, uh, Queen Victoria and the current Queen Elizabeth were all named alongside in Southampton um days before their maiden voyages so queen anne yep. will be uh, unique amongst the queens however there is actually uh, funnily enough some precedent in naming a cunard ship that has the name of a queen um after its first fair paying passengers so this isn't the first time this has happened in cunard's history and some of the listeners may be scratching their heads because we've just rattled off all of the the well-known names of cunard queens but there is one other that didn't have the queen prefix, but her name was the name of a queen. Um, mm -hmm. I've made a, a video about it, and that will form this week's quiz. Uh, in so much as there is one other ship that was named after a queen that was given its Cunard name after having carried fair paying passengers on board. And my question to listeners is, which which ship was it? And what was, what was its name? And you get bonus points if you can tell me uh, its, its other name. It had two names. So um, bonus points for that. So yeah, go and check out the video if you want a hint, uh, if you want to get the answer right, or if you know the answer, or if you want to just take a stab. And maybe this could be an opportunity to, uh, to use that audio function, Baz. Yeah, just head to the website, The Big Cruise Podcast. On the right-hand side, you'll see a little microphone. Just click on that. It allows you to, I think it's a maximum of 90 seconds, and you don't need anywhere near that. Just give us your name and answer to Chris's quiz, and we'll, uh, we'll weave you in. First in, best rest. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's already on that that video um, lots and lots of comments from people in uh, regards to the the announcement and and the, and the name from uh, people saying how excited they are to how relieved they are that it's actually going to be in Liverpool because they live in the area and they wanted to see it, to people who are um, on the maiden voyage and had already booked accommodation in Southampton in the hopes that the naming would take place the day before, like it did with previous ships who are who are understandably disappointed about that. So there's a whole range um, of, of different opinions that, uh, the, you know, maybe that's maybe that's what, what, what happens when you do something a little bit different is that it certainly builds awareness and, and gets uh, gets interest. So, you know, we're seeing yeah. lots of different cruise lines do the namings at t different times well after the ship's entered service. Perhaps this is uh, perhaps this is the new tradition for 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 cruising. Refresh my memory, Chris. Have they announced the Godmother? Not yet. No. No, no, not yet. And uh, I mean, somebody will obviously know <laughs> at um, at Cunard, but uh, but it hasn't been revealed. And uh, and and um, I, I too am waiting with uh, with very eager anticipation as to who it might be. In fact, we could we could have a little bit of fun here on the podcast, Baz, and uh, and take a take a bit of a tally on who, what people think the, who people think the Godmother might be. Oh, okay. So, so I'm going to put it out there. My money is on Princess of Wales. Do you think so? There you go. I've heard lots of different suggestions from people on, on the YouTube channel. Um, and I think everybody has their own like preferences to who they hope it might be. Fair play. Mate, let's take a very short break and then let's come back with a smattering of news from around the world. Sounds good. Okay, Chris, we've got uh, some, well, there's been a lot of news that's happened since we lasted uh, our podcast, but we've kind of parked all of that because a lot of it's quite old now, but uh, we've brought together the top stories that have happened over the last uh, couple of days or the last week or so, and we're kicking it off with uh, Princess, who have brought down Jill Whelan to spread the love in Australia. Yes, exactly. So she's obviously a, an original cast member from The Love Boat, and uh, there's a lot of interest around this. In fact, I've been contacted by a number of different um, people here in Australia, cruise commentators, who are quite excited about the idea of meeting her. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's down here this week. Uh, they're they're launching uh, the fact or relaunching because it's something you can do on board uh, Princess and other cruise lines. They're relaunching the Princess Perfect wedding package just in time for for Valentine's Day and encouraging people that want to uh, renew their vows or get married on board. They can do so uh, with the help of your your local travel agent. So uh, yeah, yeah so. exciting. I do have um, that's not a gripe, but 
I just feel like Princess are holding on to this love boat just that little bit too much. Like, yes, it's great, it's happened, but how many times can you reintroduce the love boat onto, onto the Princess fleet? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I was um, <clears throat> recently on board uh, the Royal Princess, and mm -hmm. they have the, the current branding that they've got across the, the fleet, and it's like, um, love this food, love this entertainment. Oh, yeah. And then because of the love boat connection, they've got love this boat, but there's a picture of one of their ships. And there's just something about seeing the word boat and seeing a ship that just kind of, yeah. you know, puts the, puts the heckles up a little bit for anybody who's into maritime history. So I, I remember I sent, I sent a photograph of that to, to you and, um, and our friend Leighton, who's also been on the podcast a number of times, because I know he, he really gets riled up when people call a, a cruise ship a boat. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, but, and, and actually, funnily enough, I was, must, have been, must have been before I had some coffee because it wasn't until you guys replied that I was like, oh, because of the love boat, that's why they did it. <laughs> so, um, but I guess it's, um, look, I mean, I suppose uh, people still react to it. People still remember loving that series. So I guess whilst it works, it works. Mm, fair play, fair play. Um, next up, uh, sister brand Carnival has announced a new um, voyage, a Carnival journey, as they refer to them, a 22-day voyage from Seattle to Sydney. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess this is effectively a repositioning of the ship, but it's being sold as this sort of um, long-duration voyage, which is not something that people usually associate with Carnival. Um, but given Luminosa is, uh, I mean, from what I can understand, she's very well received in Australia, um mm -hmm. it makes sense for people who might want to to spend some time in in the northern hemisphere and then and then relocate on the ship yeah absolutely and what's interesting is luminosa is normally based in brisbane so we would normally see her reposition from seattle back to brisbane but this time in 2025 uh, she will be departing uh, seattle and heading through to sydney arriving on the the 11th of october so mm. it'll be interesting to see whether she's uh, going to be uh, swapping things out with splendor maybe or or maybe there's other things for who knows but uh, mm. yeah nice opportunity to enjoy the ship into sydney for the first time yeah we've never had any any reviews or um, invitations to have a look around the the carnival ships here on the in the on the podcast but if anyone has um has been on board and wants to share what the experience is like, uh, drop us a line. Mm, absolutely, by all means. Um, next up, now this announced yesterday, Chris. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at the, the new renderings, the new images of Paspali Pearl by Penant. Um She is an absolute stunner, and I think she's going to be incredibly popular in the Kimberley. I think so, yes. I, I've just very, very briefly been able to have a, a scroll through the the website that they're um, they put together for for the ship, um, you know, very uh, unique uh, concept, I suppose, and bringing bringing that kind of level of luxury to the to the Kimberley. Um, all sorts of information that's available online. Fifteen staterooms and suites. It only carries thirty guests. The the imagery of the of accommodation looks amazing, and I suppose just the thought of sitting on those aft decks there with the um, couch seating and the cabanas and that sort of thing and looking out at the uh at that scenery would be quite an experience absolutely now of course Pallant's no stranger to the Kimberley so it's something they've done for for quite some time now um but this uh, new vessel as we say only 30 guests is uh, going to be uh, launching in 2025 um she was actually formerly the island escape i don't know if uh, listeners may remember her she was a brand new build for island escape cruises who unfortunately uh, during covid had to cease trading so uh Paspali by Penance is uh, a, a new vessel by all accounts because they've taken really the hardware and really, really enhanced it. And I think it's going to be uh, rather special. So well done to Penance yet again. Oh, so cool. Um, and lastly this week, mate, we've got some news out of our friends at Windstar Cruises. It's now, it's, it's now the turn of Star Breeze to take over in French Polynesia. Yeah, so she'll be um, cruising. Well, she actually has already begun cruising uh, in Tahiti uh, from this week, actually, the 4th of mm -hmm. February. Um, and uh, they had a ceremony that had about 500 people invited along to to um, to sort of commemorate the the, the commencement of these voyages, um, including the, the president of French Polynesia and uh, their Speaker of the House as well. So, yeah, quite a uh, an interesting and uh, well-attended event. 
Yeah, so Windstar have been there for 36 years in uh, Tahiti. Uh, most recently, they had their, their sail, or one of their smaller sail yachts, um, operating uh, year-round there. But it's now time to uh, swap out for Star Breeze, who is one of the, the motor sailing vessels, so doesn't have the sails. Sorry, it's a motor yacht, not a motor sailing vessel. Mm-hmm. Um, and she carries a little over 300 guests. So still a really nice, intimate experience to, to experience the best of Tahiti and uh, French Polynesia. You know, pack your bags. You love Windstar. I do, yes. And I've never yeah. been to Tahiti, so maybe I need to uh, put that on the bucket list. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Mate, that's all we've got in cruise news for this week, but I know we're both short on time, so we'll, we'll call that a day. Um, now, you're traveling uh, next week. You're going to be uh, delivering one of your lectures on board. Where are you heading to? What are you up to? Yes, yeah, so I'll be um, coming to you next week from the Queen of Victoria, uh, mm-hmm. and I'll be crossing the international dateline, Baz, and the equator. Ooh. So it's uh, part of her um, world cruise, and I'll be doing my uh, maritime uh, history um, shows and presentations on board the the ship. Um, And, you know, it's going to be a bit different for me to be in that part of the world too, because quite often um, I will will sail as a guest speaker in in the UK market or in the Australian market, but this will be a voyage that will presumably have a a lot of um, our American friends on board and... uh, and people who are also going to sail back to, to Australia and New Zealand um, uh, on Queen Victoria. So that's going to be fun. Mm. Have you crossed the, qu- crossed the equator before? I have, yes. So uh, no, you know uh, no dunking in the pool or kissing the fish for me. But um, <laughs> I'm actually going to, uh, you know, going to bring some videos from, from those um, activities and events uh, on my YouTube channel. So we'll be able to maybe talk a little bit about the, the, the history of, um, of crossing the equator. It's... Uh, it's a lot, uh, like so many things, it's much more complicated and a lot more, uh, in some, some some parts of history, a lot more sinister than what we see today. So, <laughs> um, you know, if you, were, if you were a sailor on one of the old sailing ships, you, you weren't being asked to, to get covered in food and, uh, food and beverages when, when you were on the pool deck. You were literally being thrown off the side of the ship in some cases. So we can go into that in a bit more detail um, from on board the ship. Yes, that's it. Uh, just a quick reminder, answer Chris's quiz question on our website, but use the uh, the audio. Use the microphone and send through your audio, and we'll weave that into next week's show. Yes, and that question, of course, was what is the name of the Cunard ship that carried the name of a queen that was officially named by Cunard after having carried fair-paying passengers? And bonus points if you can also tell us her original name. I think I know, but I well, if you know, you're going to have to go onto the website and leave us an audio message, Baz. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I might just do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. See you next week. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Until next time, bon voyage.